Hello, my name is John Brisson, author of Fix Your Gut and Health Coach. Welcome to the Fix Your Gut YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about the four uh, main types of reflux, uh, their pathologies, and why a person uh, may get reflux in the first place. Um, so there are four uh, main types of reflux diseases um, that are recognized in medical literature. Um, at least three of them are recognized uh, by many gastrologists and ENT doctors. Um, however, uh, it depends, and we'll talk about why that may be in a minute. Um, and there is one that is only in medical literature that has not been uh, currently discussed, you know, as your doctor is probably unaware of it. Um, so the main four types of reflux, there's probably more that we're unaware of currently right now. Um, is acid reflux, which is, you know, most people have heard of gastrointestinal esophageal reflux disease, um, which is GERD. Uh, so that is the first type of reflux where a person refluxes a stomach contents, mainly acid, into their esophagus. Uh, the second type of reflux is known as pepsin reflux, uh, which is uh, commonly associated with the condition I had, which is... Um, laryngopharyngeal uh, reflux disease, um, where um, you reflux stomach contents, but instead of it getting blocked by your upper esophageal sphincter, which is right here in your, your throat, um, which happens in GERD, where, you know, it kind of gets it's, uh, st blocked up here, so it kind of gets stuck in the esophagus, the stomach contents push through, and they can go into the nasal cavity, they can go into the oral cavity, they can go into the station tubes, um, and they leave behind this enzyme called pepsin that your stomach makes. And that enzyme, when it becomes active, uh, because if it gets exposed to acid, because you know that's usually what turns it on in the stomach, is activated by stomach acid, by very things that are low pH, and then it gets inactive when it gets mixed in, with sodium bicarbonate and bile, and the stomach chime does in the duodenum, uh, the pepsin in and of itself, you know, can become activated in these areas when they're exposed to acid. Let's say you drink a soda. You know, soda has a very low pH, has a lot of uh, acid in it, phosphoric acid usually. Um, and so you drink it and, and it activates the pepsin and the enzyme starts irritating the tissue. It starts breaking down the tissue of wherever it's, it's exposed to. So that is the second type of, type of reflux. Um, the third type of reflux is bioreflux. Uh, and bile is a, a, a chemical um, that your, um, your liver produces and it's stored in your gallbladder and it's released into your duodenum and it's there to emulsify fats to help the absorption of fat soluble vitamins as an antimicrobial agent and it also uh, increases the pH of stomach chyme. Um, and so for bowel reflux to occur, the sphincter that connects the duodenum and the stomach, known as the pyloric sphincter, has to be weakened so that more bile can travel up into the stomach. And then that also the lower esophageal sphincter has to be uh, weakened, which is the sphincter that connects the bottom of the esophagus to the top part of the stomach, and so that it can travel upwards into the esophagus. Now, bowel reflux is very caustic to the esophagus. The esophagus does not have mechanisms against bile reflux uh, compared to somewhat of the other two types of reflux, acid and pepsin. And bile reflux is one of the main causes of the condition Barrett's esophagus. Um, where acid reflux, not so much, and we'll talk about why that is in a minute. Pepsin reflux, and yeah, it's associated with some cases of Barrett's. Um, now the fourth uh, cause of reflux is, is microbial toxin reflux. Uh, when you have um, dysbiosis in your stomach, whether it's candida, uh, which you would, you would reflux mycotoxins or gram-negative bacteria, uh, you would reflux endotoxins, you know, these, these toxins that these bacteria have within their cell wall that can cause inflammation or gram-positive uh, uh, bacteria, they'll have usually something called pyrotoxins. And so when you have this dysbiosis in your stomach, because your stomach is supposed to be one of the most sterile environments within your body. Now, no part of your body is sterile. We've discovered that through medical research, specifically in the last 10 years. Not even your brain is sterile. Um, your bladder is not sterile. No part of your body is sterile. It all has a microbiome. However, the stomach tends to have less bacteria than, than the rest of your, your body, um, or more, less microorganisms, should I say, because it tends to have a very low pH. It's very acidic because of stomach acids being produced, hydrochloric acid. 
So a lot of microorganisms cannot survive in a very acidic state. Now there's some like Peptostreptococcus, Lactobacillus, they are able to, they are acid resistant, or, or should I say low pH resistant, but there are a lot of strains that cannot. Um, so when a person has, let's say, H. pluri dysbiosis, for example, H. pluri produces this chemical, uh, this enzyme, should I say, called urease, and it breaks down this chemical in your stomach called urea that's produced through normal digestion. And when it does that, it breaks the bonds and it forms ammonia. And ammonia has an extremely elevated, very high pH, so it neutralizes the stomach acid so that the H. pluri can come out of the mucosa of the stomach and, and make more colonies and live in a higher pH environment um, because you know, it can't survive when the pH of the stomach is low. Um, it, it's not able to, to withstand that. So when you, ha you know, when, you're, when you have this high pH, you have H. pluri dysbiosis, when you reflux, you're also refluxing H. pluri into the esophagus, or if you have silent reflux and your lower upper esophageal sphincter is weakened, you're refluxing it into your mouth. And this, you know, this bacteria, these toxins, endotoxins, you know, your body reacts very negatively to them. It causes a lot of inflammation. So that is another type of reflux, uh, you know, toxin reflux. So those are the four main types of reflux. There may be more. Um, if you've ever heard of non-acidic reflux, that usually is the other three, uh, pepsin, bile, and toxin. Uh, those are non-acidic. Acidic is, you know, mainly the only one when talking about acid. Um, and so a lot of people don't realize is the average person, the average healthy person, you actually reflux stomach chine multiple times throughout the day. Um, your LES opens. I mean, it happens when you burp. It happens when you sneeze. It happens when you're swallowing food and drinking water. Uh, it happens if you bend over. Um... So, yeah, I mean, the, the esophagus is actually able to handle clearing acid, and even clearing pepsin and even endotoxins to a small degree uh, fairly easily. So even though we, an average person might reflux 30 times a day at maximum, uh, they don't feel it. Their esophagus is able to handle it. There is defense mechanisms within the esophagus to be able to handle uh, acid um, and uh, a little bit of pepsin and, and toxins to some degree, um, but it's not able to really handle bile, um, and that is why bile is so caustic because you know it's able to handle low pH, but bile is a little bit high higher pH. You know it's above neutral, and it's not able to really handle that very alkaline pH. So because of that, that is you know why bile you know reflux has been associated more strongly with Barrett's um, because the, uh, stru the structure of the esophageal cells actually kind of match the duodenum um, and, and, and try to actually, you know, by matching the duodenum kind of protect itself from the bile. Um, but yeah, so the esophagus, you know, when we swallow, it has a mixture of saliva and our saliva has bicarbonate in it too. So that bicarbonate is able to neutralize some of the stomach acid that's in pepsin that is left in, in, in the, um, the esophagus. Um, the, the cells in our esophageal lining produce um, carbonic andrease, which forms bicarbonate when it mixed with something acidic. So that also further neutralizes acid, as well as you do have a mucosal layer. Now, granted, it's not as strong as mucosal layer in your stomach, but you still have mucosal layer in your esophagus, and that's able to also buffer any damage from acid as well. Um, I mean, uh, so yeah, I mean, there's also a, a probiotic bacteria called Acromantia mucophilia, which tends to be low in people suffering from reflux disorders. Because, and and, and the, you know, the reason why it's tied in with reflux is because this bacteria, this, this mostly probiotic bacteria, helps maintain the mucosal barrier. It helps break down damaged mucin and, and replace it and, every, and, and everything. So it seems to help kind of be like a gatekeeper uh, for the uh, mucosal barrier. And many people with reflux will have very, and even leaky gut, will have very low uh, acromancy mucophilia in stool tests uh, like GI effects that will show up under PCR uh, testing. Um, so, you know, our, our throat does have barriers, uh, our esophagus does have barriers, not throat, should I say, does have barriers uh, to protect against acid reflux and somewhat pepsin reflux. But if you're reflexing everything else, it really doesn't have any guard against that, especially bile. Bile is very damaging caustic. And your upper, you know, your throat, 
uh, your oral cavity, your nasal cavity, your, your, your station tubes. It doesn't have hardly any of these. Um, I mean, your, 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 your nose has a little bit of uh, muco mucosa, obviously. It has a little bit of mucus, too, as well. Um, but it, you're more susceptible to acid and, and, and bile and, and, and endotoxins and bacterial toxins and, and the pepsin. Uh, then your esophagus is. Your esophagus, like I mentioned, tends to be a little bit more hardy when it comes to acid and pepsin. Um, so there, that those are um, the four main types of reflux. Now, one last thing on toxin reflux is, like I mentioned, is is when you reflux it, I mean, it's damaging whatever it touches. Uh, usually because the immune system, it triggers immune response. It, and the toxins bind to uh, uh, many, uh, I think it's a TLR4 uh, uh, toll-like receptor, CD14, MD2. And doing so, it causes your body to secrete all these pro-inflammatory cytokines and nitric acid and stuff like that, leading to increased inflammation. Um, so endotoxins, I mean, they've been associated with, if endotoxins get out of your, blood, get out of your um, digestive tract. For example, you've probably seen the studies online about linking poor oral health to heart disease. Well, that's because you know the bacteria in the mouth that produce endotoxins or pyrotoxins. They, they when you have a damaged um, oral mucosal uh, barrier, gums are damaged. They bleed a lot. They're open. You know these toxins get into the bloodstream and they start causing inflammation in the arteries, uh, which leads to um, you know cholesterol being patched and white blood cells dying in that general area. And more inflammation so you know you want to make sure you're taking care of your mouth you want to make sure you're taking care of your esophagus your digestive tract you want to fight against leaky mouth and, and, le and leaky gut um, to some degree because you don't want this to happen um, so I hope in this video I broke down the four major types of reflux um, what they are um, I will leak each blog that I have on how to find relief whether you're dealing with a GERD or, or acidic reflux, um, gastroesophageal reflux disease, a silent reflux, uh, pepsin reflux, laryngeal um, esophagus uh, reflux disease, which I had um, myself personally, bile reflux, or uh, upper gut dysbiosis, which will lead to endotoxin or, or toxin reflux. Um, and I hope that you're able to find relief. Uh, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, thank you, and have a good evening.